Welcome to Alpha Wolf Trading. Do you know that there's over 12,000 stocks or companies that trade on the OTC? Between the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, you have over 7,000 companies. But us as retail investors, we wouldn't know that unless we were researching. Because why? Wall Street focuses on the elite, the big companies. And where the retail investor has their advantage is in small and micro cap stocks. Why? Because you have the opportunity to speak directly with leadership. That is what this is all about here at Alpha Wolf Trading. We're trying to find the hidden gems and we interview the executive teams of companies that we think meet the parameters to be those hidden gems. I also want to make sure you understand that this is not a paid for promotion. I collect no compensation for the interviews I do here. These companies that I interview have been identified as potential opportunities for me and the members of Alpha Wolf Trading to receive a higher than average return on our investment. These companies I have identified either because of a technical setup on a chart, a fundamental change within the organization, new management team, new products, all kinds of different things that actually lead me here. But what do I think is the most important? Leadership. And that is why I do these interviews. I want to understand what drives the person that is leading the charge. I want to feel their passion. I want to understand their vision and the strategy that they're going to use to achieve success. That is what these interviews are for. I want to understand the share structure and the cap table, the size of the TAM, the total addressable market. This is the opportunity to learn all of those things. So sit back and enjoy. And if you learn anything from today's interview, do us a favor. Subscribe to the Alpha Wolf Trading YouTube channel. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I am not a financial advisor. I recommend highly that before buying any security, you speak to a financial advisor and do your own due diligence. Hey everybody, Tim from Apple Trading coming at you with a follow-up with Copen. Um, K-O-P-N is the ticker symbol on the NASDAQ. Michael Murray, which I think is a rock star, just happens to uh happens to be in kind of a kind of a crappy situation because he he he's inherited something that that he has to deal with. But uh overall, Michael, you've been doing a, a fantastic job of operating Copen. Right. Thanks. So you, you, let, let's just real quickly. I know you're constrained because of you know this is an ongoing legal battle, but let's talk about what's happened with the stock that's put pressure on it recently. Okay. Sure. Uh, happy to. So, so I think uh, fundamentally, the last time we spoke, Copen's actually stronger on the business side uh, than we ever have before. So, fifty-five million of orders, uh, record for the company. Uh, we're scaling up production right now. We had a decent Q1 in terms of revenue. Q2, we're scaling and ramping. Uh, and Q3, Q4 look very exciting from that standpoint. So so all things good on the fundamental front of the business itself. Um, and uh, we've got some new customer announcements that we're going to uh, have in this quarter. And we've announced two new research contracts with the uh, one with the Navy, which is exciting, uh, that follows kind of what LG and Samsung is doing with translucent displays. And then secondly, uh, our night vision goggle uh, technology that we're bringing to market soon. So, so all that is going well. I think we're going to have tremendous uh, announcements on the customer front this quarter and next. So that's all cool. But right now where we are, uh, we had an adverse uh, jury uh, uh, verdict, uh, unfortunately, on a case that has been uh, with us since 2016. Uh, we were not expecting the uh, exemplary or uh, discouragement damages that the jury awarded. Uh, we are going to fight them. We are going to appeal them. Uh, it is an ongoing judgment that has not been rendered yet by the uh, court system in Colorado. Um, so we're fighting that as we speak. 
so I can't talk too much about it, but um, I'm disappointed with the outcome, and obviously so is the stock. <clears throat> right. And, and, you know, I think, actually, you and I were just talking about the um, the chart. And the chart's in, in a, you know, look, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull punches here. I mean, the chart's kind of been a, in a, that's a, 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 not a great place, right? Mm -hmm. But, but this is the way I view it. After you know, we we had a minute to talk about this. You know, the court system is uh, is is an interesting thing, right? So you you got this jury ruling in Colorado, um, which is their hometown. Which is this was a little tiny company, right? Um, you're a big bad corporation. And, and, you know, things went, fell in their favor. Th th those things can change very quickly. So, but, you know, unfortunately you have, you're put in a position where now you have to put up a bond, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's probably what has investors concerned, that you're going to have to raise capital. And in this environment, raising capital is, is for micro cap companies, is painful uh, for the most part, Right. Now you've you've indicated that there are things that you can do that aren't you know you're going to try let's put it we we talked about this before you're not a dumb guy right you're going to try and make things as non dilutive as possible right so yeah let's talk about that I think it's important because we have we have a number of of options for the company firstly and foremostly uh, those folks that know me uh, like you do I I don't. I don't give up a fight ever, um, <clears throat> first and foremostly. So uh, in that note, we've hired, uh, I think, the best appellate law firm in the country, uh, Quinn Emanuel out of New York City, um, to help us through this. And, you know, unless I'm able to settle this for something that's reasonable, in my view, uh, we'll take this all the way through to appeals. And I think that's what it deserves. And I think um, the great thing about the United States is our appeals process and the, and I believe in the court system, by the way, even though we had an adverse reaction from the jury, a hometown jury, you know, those sorts of theatrics that go on in a jury trial in a hometown like this, it happens. But that's why you have an appellate system. So I believe in the court system. That's why we're going to appeal this vigorously and rigorously. So I'm confident that we'll be able to do that. But I love the quote. One of my biggest investors said this quote to me. He said, you know, Michael, we came in at 89 cents and then we rode this stock up and, and made some money at $2.50, $2.60. We'll be there when you need us for sure. But the quote was from Warren Buffett, when great companies face a solvable large problem, that's when you make the most money. Absolutely. I, I agree think that's the case that we're in right now. Yeah, so you know, let's. I'm going to talk about technically right now. I'm going to talk about the stock just for a second from a technical standpoint because you know, look, reality is there's two types of investors: there's the fundamental guys, and then there's the technical guys. Right now, this is sitting in the technical guys' favor. They're salivating, I would say, probably because they're putting in a what's called a bear flag below an area of support, which is the one dollar mark. Yep. Right, one dollar is big, obviously, because maintain Nasdaq listing, that whole thing. Right <laughs> now, why is it in limbo right here? It's in limbo right here because they want to know what kind of deal you're going to get with this financing. Right? How bad is it going to be? And that's why they're going to try and hammer the stock. Now, you've got an all-time low back in. I mean, I want to say, what is that? 20 cents or something to that effect, 19 cents. I don't think you're going to go all the way back there because um, that's a long ways to go. But you could definitely pull down and then get – that's how you actually confirm a double bottom, by the way, right? I mean, you put in a low that's close to that other one, that is the definitive – that becomes the definitive bottom, right? That's how you prove that that is the bottom. It didn't go any lower. So the way I look at, at it is right now, I think the stock is sitting at a great, great area to start. If you don't own it, to take a, take a position. And if it goes lower, I would be adding that, that, that. This is me, right? I'm not telling anybody what to do, but 
I would say this is a gift. This is an opportunity to get into a company that has a very different strategy than it has had for the last 30 plus years uh, under your leadership, right? So you inherited a bad situation. And like Warren Buffett said, this is a large and very solvable problem. This probably will take another year, year and a half. I don't know how long it'll take to get, but it will get resolved. And if it does get resolved in your favor, then what happens? Exactly right. Exactly right. So it, what, the way I think about it is this is the worst case scenario that could have happened, right? Yeah. So when we get past the bond, and we will, uh, then we will go to appeal or we will settle this, this issue. And I've been trying to settle it. I think I've been uh, pretty vocal about that. But we understand that there were some other things that this company wanted to do in terms of uh, you know, taking action against our patent attorneys, which gated that that somewhat. So, so all that being said, there are other opportunities for Copen to monetize uh, our our assets. Meaning, our IP portfolio. We have over two hundred patents, of which some of them, quite frankly, don't belong in our future. So, what do we do with those? Or there's ways that we can monetize those in terms of latent IP. We're looking at that, but that's going to take some time, of course. Right. We're also invested in seven different uh, portfolio companies where some of those investments, again, are going to be monetized just naturally because the companies are taking on investment. Some might be getting sold, as an example, and other ones uh, are, quite frankly, uh, good investments that we can monetize. I don't like to do that in a position of somewhat weakness right now because we want to raise that capital. But... You know, we can value those assets very, very quickly and, and, and generate cash from them. So as an example, uh, one of the investments that we have was just sold. Uh, so we'll re receive some cash from that. Another one of our investments uh, was just invested in. Uh, so now we can do a mark to market because we now know through a third party what the value of that investment is. So, you know, as an example, uh, last year we had a big perturbation to the to the balance sheet because we had to write down one of our investments mark to market because they failed the SPAC. Now, guess what? We get to write them back up because they're doing better. So uh, so there's going to be things like that that we can do and sell the shares that we have in some of those companies and monetize it, bring in some cash. So uh, my target is at least, you know, uh, uh, I want to bring in at least $6 million, uh, if I can uh, through our assets or at least mark to market. Uh, and we have to do that, obviously, within SEC gap rules, and we will, uh, of course, but there's definitely opportunities there. Uh, and then again, as I said, once we get past the bond, the expense that we've been seeing on the SG&A line for, you know, a million and a half to three million, give or take per quarter of legal fees, that goes down exponentially because the costs around an appeal are far less than they are going through an actual trial. Oh, is that right? I, is that, that I did not know. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, actually, it's all about time. It's it's really the time to get your case in front of an appellate court. And a three-judge appellate court system, I think, will take a look at the facts in this case, realize that Copen had a contract that was agreed to. We had an amended contract that was agreed to that we could enjoy the IP that we agreed to. And I think we'll be successful in that case uh, moving forward. So uh, I think the worst case scenario hit us. Um, I think we can traverse that worst case scenario. And when we do, I think the stock will react quite favorably to it. Um, but in the background, we have a great business. We have a new brand, a new logo, a new website, uh, new technologies coming to market. Uh, our order book is, is a record level and we're executing. Our quality levels are, are now in low signal digits uh, of uh, returns, which is exemplary for our business. Uh, so I'm really proud of what the team has accomplished in the last year and a half. And I can't believe it's only been a year and a half, by the way, that I've been here. But just think of what we can do in the next year and a half to three years before this even gets to an appellate court. So so I think there's a lot of goodness there. I think the knee-jerk reaction of the stock makes sense. But I think, you know, at 80 cents, uh, once the window opens, I'm certainly a buyer at that point. Ah, very good. I mean, and you know what, that's... that's um... That's something people should pay attention to, right? I mean, look, if insiders are stepping up to the plate and they, everybody has to understand there are blackout periods where, you know, there are certain things that are, if there's stuff happening with inside the company, they, they can't, they can't buy, right? So when that window opens, 
um, start seeing some insider activity, that would be a real positive thing, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, look, Michael, I mean, my view of, of the new coping has not changed at all. You just happen to inherit a thorn that is in your side right now that you're going to have to deal with, mm -hmm. but you're going to have to keep executing the plan that you've established a year and a half ago, right? That's right. That's and 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 that's that's what matters. Ultimately, that that's what matters. That's right. Because you're you're growing book, you're growing revenue, and I mean you were on the you were on the way to cash flow positive, right? Yeah, yeah. We were, we came in a couple hundred thousand dollars light of cash flow positive in Q1. Uh, we almost made it in Q2 last year, but it's all about absorption rate, right? And um, to get to an absorption rate for Copen, it's around that fifty million dollar mark. Um, of revenue uh, that we need to get to and also better quality. It's fundamentally just a few le levers, right? It's revenue, it's quality rate, return rate, which we now I think reached a new level in, in its goodness. And then thirdly, bidding better, taking better deals. And I, I can definitely tell you we've, we've uh, been taking better deals that are more profitable for the business and not taking as much risk on some of these things. And quite frankly, turning down some business that we just don't want to take the risk on from a profitability standpoint because our growth trajectory is still quite positive. In fact, um, we finally started to hear some good news out of uh, our folks that we work with on our armored vehicle program that they're starting to see good demand get placed uh, for our um, uh, weapon site that we build for the Abrams tank program. Uh, it's getting uh, some orders that we're starting to see um, from them. So. Uh, that's good news. Uh, that was one of the, the perturbations last year was the SEP4 upgrade for the Abrams tank was canceled. However, the good news is, as per uh, our briefing with them last week, General Dynamics is starting to see some orders for that uh, uh, weapon site start to roll through. So it's going to be part of the upgrades that they're able to ship to their customer base uh, moving forward. So uh, that was a big relief and a great signal for us to see that that program is A, on track, B, uh, it gives us a, a view that uh, the revenue that we thought we were going to get from that program is intact. So that's always a good news. And thirdly, one of the interesting things is when we're done our PPAP program, once you do one PPAP, PPAP is like an automotive qual, uh, Tim, once you do one, you can do them all. So um, we're now getting some interest from automotive companies uh, to work with Copen on some micro displays. Haven't decided whether or not that's a, a business we want to get into or not, but nevertheless, our PPAP program is uh, on track to be completed uh, on schedule and on time in full. So, so good news there. The F-35 program is going very well. We, we're seeing some demand signals on the OLED front uh, from those folks since Lockheed got their orders from the U.S. government. Uh, we're waiting for our orders in that area. Uh, and the AMLCD program continues to, to ship well and on time and full. And then obviously the thermal weapons site programs are going well. And we just announced last week our IVAS Now strategy, Tim, which is how can we save lives today? How can we give the folks in Israel the ability to see in these tunnels today using thermal imagers and the night vision goggles? And we announced that uh, uh, small business initiative uh, research award uh, last week. And also we're working with uh, Wilcox, which is a great company out of New Hampshire uh, on their uh, fusion claw system for a daytime HUD. So you can see where your buddies are and where your foes are during the day. Today, you can use this technology today, daytime and nighttime, couple of pounds in your backpack and off you go. You've got everything that IVAS is supposed to be, that $2 billion contract, which we're still competing on and we'll compete on from a display perspective with neural display, but now we have an IVAS now strategy that we can monetize this year, next year, and moving forward to help save lives. And uh, it's great technology and uh, available today. And you'll see more announcements on that from us very, very soon. Any any other uh, innovative stuff coming out in the, in the near future? Yeah, yeah neural display. Uh, so everyone didn't think we could do it, uh, but we did it, uh, it works. Uh, and uh, it, it needs a lot of work, let me be clear, but we announced that we actually were able to use our own software, our own AI developed software in-house to do eye tracking through a micro display, a bi-directional micro display. 
the colors aren't where I want it to be or the brightness isn't where we want it to be for consumer or defense applications, but we proved that it works. So we can remove some cameras from the Apple II Vision Pro as an example and do eye tracking for things like the spatial computing market. But why is that important? The reason why it's important is, uh, I'll use uh, uh, my son as an example. My son loves shoes. He loves Air Jordans, right? And if you think about using the Meta Quest as an example, and you look at all a bunch of shoes across the screen here, if you look up at the top right against some Air Jordans and you see his eye, his pupil will, will kind of get bigger because he wants to buy that one, guess what you're gonna get the next time you go to Facebook? You're gonna get that Air Jordan you know, uh, uh, advertising. So eye tracking in those types of applications is a trillion dollar industry, but wow. you need to track the pupil and also size the pupil without adding size, weight, power consumption, and, and obviously cost. Now, neural display gives you the ability to do that eye tracking through the display, just like I'm looking at a display right now, it will actually track where my pupil is and the size of the pupil based on what I'm looking at. Great opportunity to reduce size, weight, and power in things like Apple II Vision Pro or the Quest. So that's our consumer strategy. We have a Korean partner that we're, we're developing that technology with uh, that we've not announced yet. And on the military side, defense side, it's the same thing, fight or flight mode, right? As soon as your pupil goes and you're you're engaged in a fight, guess what? The brightness that you're seeing too high. You need to turn it down, turn the contrast up, and you need to do it within 500 microseconds. Neural display can do that. That's what it's being developed for, for IVAS next and situation awareness like helmets, like the F-35 or Chinook helicopter. When these folks get engaged, they hit fight or flight mode. They're just human beings like you and me. No one wants to get shot at. But when that happens, your pupil blows up, you've got to turn the brightness down, contrast up, and you got to do it within 500 microseconds. And guess what? There's only one U.S. company that can build that technology today, and that's Copen. We're the only ones. And we have that capability today, and we showed it off, and we'll hopefully show it off at CES in 2025. Uh, but we got a lot of work to do. Don't get me wrong. We're, we, we still have a lot of work to do on the tech, but we showed that it works. It's exciting, exciting stuff. Yeah, I'm loving it. I, honestly, I love this job. I love this. You're still company. having fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the the last month, I've I've lost some hair. Uh, I've gone a little gray. I'm not gonna lie to you. I put on a few pounds, but there's a lot of fight in us. Uh, this is again, this is a solvable issue that is an artifact of of previous management and the previous uh, focus of the company. We'll get through it. Uh, it'll be a, a perturbation that that we just have to get through. And once we do, fine, we'll move on. Uh, but the opportunities of the company are, are great. The market, unfortunately, Tim, is coming to us. The, the world is not getting to be a safer place, unfortunately. Our, our troops and our partners uh, in the Ukraine, in Israel, in South Korea, um, and Taiwan are going to need the technology that Copen has. They're going to need to see their adversaries in thermal imaging in nighttime before their adversaries see them. That's number one, save lives. Number two, make sure that we can uh, deliver that technology on time in full so that it can be used and trusted. And number three, make sure you can make a profit at it. It is that simple. Um, it is literally that simple and we're doing well against our strategic initiatives. So, so as I sit here today, we're a stronger company than we were the first time we met. We are. Yeah. But we have this problem that we need to get past. And, and we will get past it. We've hired the best appellate law firm, in my view, in the country. And uh, like I said, uh, I don't go down without a fight. And I think this is worth fighting for. And uh, we're going to go do that. And every company on the NASDAQ, Tim, has had to do this. Unfortunately, it's part of our life. It's just that the adverse uh, jury verdict uh, was significant. No, there's no question. Um, but we're not done fighting that. Um, we're working with uh, our lawyers to argue that down if we can. And uh, regardless, uh, if we can't settle it, we'll appeal it and uh, get the bond posted and, and move on. So right. right. Listen, Michael, you know what I love about you? You didn't try to dodge an interview. You were more than happy to come on, talk about things, right? Transparent, straight shooter. You got a plan. You're sticking to the plan. This is pre-Michael stuff that you're dealing with. And you're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. This is an opportunity. It, this is how I how I view it, right? It's an opportunity. 
and and if if it were me, like I said, if you're not in the stock, this would be a great opportunity to dip your toe. If it goes lower, you add. And and you know, I don't think Copeland's going out of business. Mm-hmm. Not off of this deal. All right. Not gonna happen. So <laughs> a little bit of a headache, but you'll get through it and you're executing. You got new products, new customers. You said that'll be announced in the near future. You're going to keep executing, yep. right? Yep. And our, our customers, I, I've spoken to our top five customers personally. You know, they're there to support us. They need our technology. We're sole sourced, right? With four of our largest programs, we are the only U.S. born company uh, that can that can deliver that technology. And again, we're sole sourced in those programs. So that's number one. Number two, we're adding to our order book. As I said earlier, number three, our opportunity pipeline is growing immensely because we're building bigger systems, the optics, the drive electronics and the system itself and taking more share and sooner or later getting into software as well. Um, you know, that's really where you start to see uh, the profit drop through uh, to the bottom line uh, for this company. But um, I, I'm super proud of the, the effort of our team, uh, what we've been able to accomplish thus far. We're changing out some of the board members, Tim. That's important for folks to be aware of. Uh, Jim uh, Brewington, who's been our chairman, is stepping down uh, at the end of uh, uh, June uh, during our proxy meeting. Um, Dr. Fan is retiring from the board. I think uh, if you read through the proxy, you can see that. And we've been able to add Marnie Seif, uh, who is an absolute uh, pro. Uh, she was the former general counsel at Analog Devices, where I worked for several years. Uh, she went through the acquisitions of Hittite Microwave with me, Maxim Technologies, Linear Tech. Uh, she is an absolute pro, and she and I have been working on uh, a lot of things uh, together, and, and we look forward to adding Marty uh, to the board um, in June. So, so we're going to continue to add to the board um, and change that cycle up, uh, and we've been adding great people, and that's what it's all about, right, Tim, is a company a company's not actually the technology. It's about the people that create the technology. And uh, we've been able to add the best people in the industry. And we continue to, regardless of, of this issue, we'll get past this and we'll move on. Um, but, um, you know, it's definitely going to be a challenge. And um, uh, our investors are there to support us. And they've been so supportive. We're very blessed to have great uh, institutional investors that have said, look, it, I invested in you at 89 cents in January of 2023. We sold at 230, 240, 250, 260. Hey, I wanted to triple bag it or, or 10 bagger, but the thing is, I got triple. That's not so bad. We'll right. In, right. This is uh, so bad. Right. That's, that's not bad at all. Like yeah. I said, this is this is this is a gift, man. I mean, if, 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 if people have to understand, this is a gift. This is a whole new company. Copen is this is not a pullback. Um Let's put it this way. I, I Copen has had swings like this in the past. Mm-hmm. But the swings like that happened in the past were because they could never, never make freaking money. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was what it really came down to. It, it was just constant R&D, right? Uh, this is a different ballgame. This is under a whole different leadership. This is, this is something that was beyond your control, pre-you, that you have to deal with, unfortunately, but there are a lot of outcomes where this become this could you know literally binary event overnight ruling goes in your favor and it's a whole different ballgame, right? I mean, right. so I like the fact that you were fighting this thing because it's the right thing to do, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you've tried to settle uh, repeatedly, and for whatever reason, they didn't want it, for what was what you felt is reasonable, right? Okay, so they have one one win under their belt. Let's see what happens next. I mean, but you're not gonna you're not sitting there fixated on only this little problem. You've got a, a whole bunch of other things that are more important than this court case, right? Yeah, and it's a process, right? And the thing I, I love about the the U.S. court system, it is a process. There's a reason why there's an appellate process uh, for issues like this, and. Uh, we believe in our position and we'll we'll defend ourselves because that's what we should do for our investors uh, and our people and the technology. So we'll do that. Uh, I'm committed to it. But more importantly, I'm committed to our plan, uh, focusing on growth, 
focusing on getting to, to break even and profitability. We came very, very close. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of where we are going once we get to the appellate process, obviously the SGNA will come back in line. We'll be able to see that as investors uh, of how well we're doing, controlling what we can control. Unfortunately, right. you know, we haven't been able to control what the court does uh, and the costs around a lawsuit. But as that you know settles down, we'll be able to control it much better. Uh, we do have a cost control platform in place. Uh, we are reducing costs as we speak. And you know, again, it's all about taking new profitable business. And as the old stuff that we have that maybe not be as profitable as we would like, but you know, we're sole sourced and we have to live with it in some cases, as the new business starts to layer on and the absorption rate of the fab goes up so shall your profitability. And we're starting to see those signals now. We're starting to see the new business start to layer in, right? The new cost structures start to layer in and some of the cost in, or probably price increases that we put in place last year layer in for the first time in Q1. That was the first quarter that we had the new pricing in on these contracts. And it is making a difference. It's incremental, but over time, those little- yeah, bits That builds up. up. It adds up, right? So, so this is a longer term play. It's a great order book that we have for right now, but look at where the market is going. Unfortunately, the market is going to thermal imaging, advanced AR, VR, thermal viewing for helmets, for spatial computing, et cetera. Micro displays everywhere in everything, including cars, uh, you know, PCs even have little micro displays in them now, which I don't understand, but they're, they're buying them. Uh, but and then obviously the medical market is now burgeoning and we just are receiving our first production orders for our CR3 headset, of which we build the entire the entire uh, headset within Copen. Uh, it's good margin because it's medical. We sit, we buy the OLED out of our fab in, in China and our friends at Lightning Silicon, good profit for us. Um, so so all good. The markets are coming to Copen. And we have the technology, four different types of micro displays that are built in the United States or with our partners in Europe for DOD, in China for consumer. And we've been working with this small little Korean company uh, on the neural display that hopefully they can sell into their customer base, of which is quite... And I like the fact that you're going to go through your IP and, and get rid of some of the stuff that's really shouldn't be there, right? And if you commoditize that, that's fantastic. Yeah, and it costs money to maintain those patents. So right. if we're going to use them and we're paying to maintain them, just to say that we have 200 patents, does that make sense? I don't think so. So let's let's monetize that. It's going to take us a little while to do it. Unfortunately, it's a longer term process. Yeah. But let's take a look at our investments too and say, you know, does this make sense for us to even be in? Does this make sense for us strategically? If not, let's look to monetize it. But I'm not going to do it from a place of, of desperation or anything like that. We need to get fair value for our investors and, and, and cash out of those investments uh, proper, properly. So um, that's the mindset that we're using. And we still have 20 million in cash. Um, you know, we were uh, considering having to do some sort of raise this year anyway, uh, but uh, we'll see how that rolls through with this bond. Uh, and I think that's what's really uh, per, you know disturbing the stock. But once we get through it, I think you know we'll be fine. Yeah, I think so too, Michael. I think you're gonna do just fine, man. I'm gonna have to call you a warrior. <laughs> it, uh, you gotta be these days. You gotta yeah. be. Uh, the one thing I've learned uh, in this position, Tim, is you gotta be a fighter. I am a fighter. I always have been, um, and that's that's how you win in business. It's how you win in life. It's how I win. And you know, when I played hockey, and and um, that's kind of the person that I am. But more importantly, we have a great team. No one wins on their own. Uh, right. Great executive team. We're we're up. Uh, you know, taking the opportunity to refresh the board of directors with great leadership. We just brought on David Newsma from Collins Aerospace. He's an all-star, uh, you know, president of Collins Aerospace for many years. Super, super smart guy. Uh, we're adding Marnie Seif, uh, former general counsel of analog devices. There's a couple other folks we're, we're looking at adding to the board. And uh, our executive team, I think, is is very focused on the on the plan, and we're bringing in the best talent. So, so from that standpoint, it's all about the people. People will grow the technology. The technology will grow the customer base through innovation and invention. And we just need to monetize it better. It is that simple, and that's what we're ac executing on right now. So we'll get through it. Um, unfortunately, I don't think you know uh, every company on the Nasdaq right now. I think has been sued uh, at this point in time. 
uh, it's just a fact of life and we'll get through it. Yeah. I, I don't think any of these departments that you're, you're currently serving are going to go away. I'm pretty sure the demand for these things is just going to get uh, bigger over time. Right. Yeah, the demand signals that we're seeing for micro displays, uh, because of the Apple II Vision Pro entrance, uh, Oculus taking a much more aggressive stance in the market. Tier twos are all uh, fired up on uh, the spatial computing side of things. So the overall TAM, if you think about TAM, total available market for micro displays, it just grew you know, exponentially uh, by about a billion dollars um, because of Apple, Google, Meta, uh, and L LG specifically. But the U.S. Department of Defense also grew because one of the big orders that we just uh, announced in, in Q1 uh, was a new thermal weapon site for a new weapon uh, that the U.S. DOD has selected. It's a new squad fire weapon uh, called the XM7 and XM250, I believe, if, I, if I'm correct on that. But they need new thermal weapon sites, and, and we've been able to uh, access that platform. Uh, and that is a new line of business for us, even though it's the same type of thermal weapon site, new configuration. So we now have two thermal weapon sites in the market with the US DOD. Super cool. Uh, we'll see that go for you know a few years uh, in the current configuration uh, before it turns into you know a new design. So so that's going well. We got some good buy signals out of our friends at uh, uh, the Abrams Tank Program. So. Uh, that's good news. We were wondering how that was going to play out when SEP4 was was canceled. The good news there is they're selling our platform into SEP3 and SEP2 upgrades, and they're seeing some demand uh, from their customers, which is great news for the company. And then obviously we have our fast mover programs with the F-35 and, and other uh, fixed wing or rotary wing programs. So all those things are going well. We're hitting our, our milestones. Unfortunately, the world is, is not going to get to be a safer place in my view in the next little while. And we're well positioned for that. And then we have our medical business, which is taking off Starting. business. Uh, we've got a great story in, in neural display and no one's got that technology uh, so far. So uh, yeah, I think we're in a good place at the moment in a, in a great market. You're sleeping fine, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sleep not so much. <laughs> I wish. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not sleeping much. Either. But uh but it's exciting. Uh, you know, I think, you know, the last month has, has taught me, um, you know, a lot about how to think about risk in the business, how to make sure that things like this don't happen again, quite frankly, um, and how to choose partners uh, wisely, make sure that we document it wisely uh, and, and cover our six, right? So, so you know, things, things will never go perfectly. It's how you learn from them. And I just oh, actually- See, I love this about you, man. This is so good, Michael. You're absolutely right. I mean, look, things are going to happen that are beyond your control. And and it's just how do you, what can you take away that's going to make you stronger, right? Correct. Correct. And and you're doing that. I mean, you, you got to face the music. It, it's like, you can't just ignore it. It's got to happen. But well, how do you, how do you make sure this doesn't happen again? Right? Right. right. For both sides, you know, I think, um, <laughs> It's important to say that, you know, there's two sides to this and all disagreements. Um, when you have a partnership, there's always two sides, like a marriage, right? There's always two sides to a story and, and feelings get hurt, you know, contracts get trampled on, but it's how you react to them and make sure that you move forward as partners uh, and, and solve these issues before they get to uh, a level that this one got to. So we learn from that. We'll get better from it uh, and we'll get past it. But uh, again, if we don't learn from it, and we make the same mistakes, that is, uh, that I, I'm not going to accept. So, uh, you know. All right, Michael, when, when should we, uh, you think you got any catalysts that, that are coming up in the near future that we should do a follow-up, a real quick follow-up with? Yeah, I, I definitely think um, Q3, Q4, start of Q4 is gonna be an interesting time for us uh, because our ramp rate is, is now hitting. Uh, Q1, we had to buy a lot of material yeah. Two, we're, we're now ramping. So we're building more per week, which is great news. And, and the quality is holding, which is fantastic. We'll have a bit of a, uh, in Q3, I think we'll still see uh, that ramp go through, but it's holiday season and, and what have you. And we also have the, the perturbation of the uh, judgment happening in, in Q3. So that, that is, is tough to, to, to have visibility through. 
Uh, so the start of Q4, I think, is going to be interesting because we'll have a lot of visibility. Uh, this issue will be uh, somewhat resolved from a standpoint. We'll know what the judgment is. Uh, and then obviously we'll have a view of, of 2025, which seems to be shaping up much better than I actually thought it was going to. Uh, and then obviously the next three years, uh, we're building our strategic plan uh, this year uh, for the next three years uh, based on the investments around neural display and uh, our IVAS Now strategy, which we've uh, just recently unveiled. Um, so we see some pretty significant upside on that. Um, so, so all that being said, I think Q4, uh, is a good time to, to reset. Yeah. So let, once we get some more clarity on this whole situation, maybe that's when we'll, we'll, we'll come back and we'll do an update, right? Sounds good. Sound good? Yes, sir. All right, Michael, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Okay. No, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. All right. Hold on one second. I'm going to shut this off. You feel as though I missed anything? I don't think so. I think, you know, you, you hit the, the technicals, which people value, uh, by the way, from, from you. Um, and those insights, I think, are important. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is, right? And exactly what you said, and I, I appreciate you saying it, is you know, I'm not hiding from this thing. Um, Got to talk about it. And, and that's what I think investors want to see, right? Um, if we don't say anything, eh, it's not so great. <laughs> well, it's not the entire focus. I mean, look. It's, this isn't a this is not a um, live or die situation. It's just not. I mean, this is a temporary situation that you're going to get through, and the, you have, like I said, more important things that you're working on that are going to matter more. That's the bottom line, right? I mean, way more. Yep. Uh, if you're not following Copen, go to their website, sign up for their investor alerts, so that you can pay attention to what's happening with the stock. Um, I, like I said, I think this is a tremendous opportunity right here. Thank you for tuning in to a, another CEO interview here at Alpha Wolf Trading. Today we had a follow-up with Michael Murray from Copen, ticker symbol K-O-P-N. I hope you enjoyed today's interview, and if you did, do us a favor, give us a like. How about giving us a share? And please make sure to smash that subscribe button. All those things are extremely important to us here at Alpha World Trading, and we appreciate you taking the time to do those things. Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Trading wishes you the very best of success.